Hi everyone, I'm Harley D, and today we're going to be making bass like this. <laughs> and bass like this. Okay, so the bass that we're going to be going through today is actually just been released on my latest EP called Alien. So it's um it's that really deep wobbly bass line that we're going to be going through today. So I'll just give it a quick play and we can have a little listen to that and then we'll get straight into it. Alien. So yeah, that's the bass. And what we'll do is we'll start off with the um, the first version. We can have a look at the um, the variation and how we make it sort of like move with that sort of wobbly, extra wobbleness, wobbliness it does. So yeah, let's get uh, let's get straight into it. So um, let's start here. We'll have a look at this serum patch. It's all made in serum. I'll turn the post processing off. Uh, we'll start with this version, and we will also turn off the uh, the bass bus because it's going through to that. So I'm pretty sure the bass bus is just a little bit of EQ and side chaining, but I'll turn it off anyway. And we can have a listen to how it sounds like coming out of the um out of the synth. So you can hear it's like really full frequency at this point. So what we're gonna do is break this down to start off with. I'm gonna turn the uh, the effects section off. And I'm also going to turn off the filter. So what I'm using is the JNO um, wavetable. So from the analog folder here, you can just go to the uh, drop down folder and find the JNO. And I've set the wavetable position to be to, um, set to one, so it's right at the start. And the level is set to like 75% uh, there. There is no unison or anything here, so it's pretty pretty simple on the oscillator side of things. And that's getting run into the um, the filter. So let's just have a quick look at the. Um, the MIDI note before we go any further now, we'll just listen to this. So if I turn that filter off, that's what the wavetable sounds like. And let's just have a look at this um, this uh, MIDI note. So I'm using D sharp zero. And as you can see, I've put some pitch bend on it. So it goes up and down. And that's what's creating some of this movement in this uh, first variation of this, this first, uh, first part of the sound. So it's moving between D, D sharp zero and it's going, only going up two, as you can see here in Serum. So that's going up to um, D sharp is it F. Pretty sure it's F, yeah. So it's, it's moving between D sharp and F, um, just pitching in and out of that essentially. So yeah, this is uh, this is going into the filter, the um, the low pass twelve filter, and I've got the cutoff set to 200, 205 hertz. There, I'm pretty sure, and. You put LFO two, so I'm using LFO two here on the um, on the cutoff, and it's going all the way up from here to there. I'll just show you that on the matrix. LFO two is going up to sixty on the matrix, and um, I've also put the resonance to sixty four percent. There's no drive or um, any fat on that, and the mix is at hundred percent. So that's what's creating uh, getting rid of the uh, top end at the moment. <laughs> And if we go to LFO3, I'm using, so I'll just go quickly over this LFO1, uh, LFO2. I've got it set to two bars and the uh, it's, it's on the off mode um, and it's set to BPM and anchor there. So that's pretty much everything on that. And LFO3, I'm using this sort of shape here, this sort of like, um, sort of like shark fin sort of shape that I've created. Uh, set to trigger mode and it's on one eighth on the rate. And that's being put on the level of the oscillator B. So that's just to create a bit of that extra wobble that uh, we're getting in there, in the, in the sound basically. So if I was to, it's just fluctuating the uh, level a little bit to give it a bit more movement. And if we also look at the, um, I'm pretty sure that's being rooted to something else. Yeah, we'll have a look at that in a second. But that is, um, that's just creating a little bit of extra movement on the oscillator at this point. So that's how we get to this sort of um, sound. And without that resonant boost, we wouldn't really have much uh, as much character. So that's really important there. So if we go to the uh, the effects section now and we turn on the tube, so this is going to bring you know some uh, extra distortion into it, some saturation, get a bit more top end coming through now. Uh, the drive is set to eighty eight percent there, and the mix is full. And then I'm going to use the um, the multi band compressor to squash it all together again. I've got the threshold set to um, minus eleven, 
The ratio is at 4 to 1, the attack's at 90, and the release is at 90, the gain is set to 0. And these are all at 100% normal. So once again, that brings it back to more of that sort of um, original wavetable we had. So it's, it's kind of bringing some extra grit in, but we've got the movement in there now from the filter and whatnot. Um, so then I'm going to use another filter on this. Uh, so this one here is set to low pass 6, and the cutoff is at 300 hertz. And I've also put LFO3 um, on the cutoff of this. So similar to what we did on the, on the oscillator, I'm just doing a little bit on the uh, cutoff of this filter as well, just to give it that extra movement that kind of works with that uh, movement we've got with at that rate in the oscillator volume. So the resonance is set to 46%, the drive's at 15 and the mix is set to 47%. So it's not full mix here. And I'll just show you on the matrix here. Uh, LFO3 is going to the, um, to the uh, filter freak, uh, the, fil the cutoff filter on that, um, that LFO here up by 10. And as you can see, there's the types I've set them to there. And LFO3 on the volume was minus 6. So that's, that's all the, um, the configuration in the matrix. And that is pretty much everything in the um, in Serum. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. Um, and yeah, that's obviously a combination of the, uh, the oscillators moving with the LFOs and the pitch bend as well. Um, so yeah, that's how I've got to uh, that sort of signal. So the post-processing is kind of what brings it all together. And it's going to do a similar thing to what we had when we just put the first filter on. We're going to be really taming it. To start off with, what I've done is I just wanted to add a bit more stereo width into the signal um, before I did anything else. So I've used a splitter. So what you could do is if you've got Ableton, you can use a splitter as well. Uh, Bitwig can do it. You can split your frequency bands up so you only process one, one pocket of sound, one pocket of frequencies um, with certain plugins, and then you can do the uh, other frequencies with other plugins. So in this case, I've chosen to um, only pr uh, put some reverb on the um, frequencies above 266 hertz. So I split the frequency here. So I am going to be putting this Valhalla room on with a short mix. Um, sorry, short K, 0.16 seconds, 1.3 milliseconds on the pre delay, and the high cuts at 8,000 um, hertz, and the mix is at 26%. So it's really subtle. If you wanted to skip this step or do, you know, add a bit of stereo within any other way, if you've got a, um, a reverb plugin that can do like Valhalla. Um, vintage verb that can that can um do a low cut on there as well so yeah there's there's ways around it if you don't have the capability of using a splitter in your um in your software but yeah it's just a subtle sort subtle sort of move just to add a bit more stereo width and, and um you know width to the signal and then after that i'm using a standard clip so i've dropped it down by 5.8 so i'm just clipping it a bit quite a bit and um and then i'm running it into a eq so as you can see here, I'm using an EQ to like at 96 dB octave slope, so quite a really steep slope actually, at about 1K. So I'm, um, let me just give that a quick play. So yeah, I'm using where that kind of cuts off and I'm putting like a resonant peak here. So if I just zoom in a bit, so it's around about 9 dB. So where it cuts off, I'm pushing up like quite steep, um, about 90, up to about 9 dB. So it's sitting, let me just have a quick look. Yeah, it's about 750, it's F sharp 5, about 750 hertz, where I'm pushing that peak up. And, you know, if I was to move this sort of peak around, I'm going to get different tones to the sound. So I kind of um, set it there because that's where I like the, uh, the sort of tone to start off with the sound. And that's going to be one way that I can um, change the variation of the sound, uh, the tone of the sound as well, is by uh, messing around with this sort of like cutoff and the peak. Um, as you can see, I'm just like boosting up a little bit more. So I'm using two to, to do that. And I'm just choosing a point about 300, 230 hertz, A sharp three there to take it down by like six, six and a half dB. Just, uh, just where I wanted to kind of reduce some signal to give some separation between that sort of like um, that upper mid range there, that 1K 700 hertz region um, and the low mids and the bass frequencies because um, it was just getting a bit cluttered there. So yeah, um, that's how I've utilized the CQ to kind of like really shape my signal. Um, and after that, what I've got is another EQ. Once again, it's a similar thing to what I just said with the, um, the, the cut at like 200 hertz. It's 12 dB um, to separate that sort of signal here 
and the sort of like the low mids, the uh, the bass harmonics. Um, so basically taking a bit of the mid frequencies out. So you can see now it creates this like dip to let things have a bit more space so not everything's just push right up there and it creates a bit more warmth to the signal. So yeah, that's how I've used um, your EQ to really shape this sound here. And then that gets run into a bass bus. So if we just quickly have a look at this. The bass bus is a sidechain. So I've got a um, multiband sidechain there, but it's pretty similar either side just to let give space for the kick drum. And then I've got another EQ, which is boosting that mid range back up by like 1 dB, so quite negligible really. Um, that was probably something I'd done in the mix. And finally, I've pinpointed some frequencies to take out, as you can see, it's only between like 1 to 2 dB there. Some of them are set to dynamic mode, so it's just where I saw frequencies maybe um, too resonant or um, they were clashing in the mix. Uh, this doesn't really shape or define the sound as much, it's really, these are really used to, um, to really slot the sound into the mix a bit better. So that's how this sound is made. And as I said about the variation, like things like this here, if we have a quick play of this one. So as you can see, if you have a look on the, um, the basically the, uh, the um, if we just go on the serum preset here, pretty much everything is the same. I've changed the shape of the, um, the movement of LFO3 uh, and LFO2 isn't moving as much. So it's just basically messing around with some parameters on the uh, modulation side of things and changing the sort of like EQ where you're sculpting this EQ. So if we go on to this, um, this one here, so you can see these two here, they are drastically different. And that's because it's kind of just using the EQ just to vary, vary the sound and the tone, basically. Um, you could you can mess around with this as much as you want to create these different tones. But as you can see, I've kind of dropped more out of that region where we was pushing up before. And now I'm pushing up more around that sort of like 200, 300 hertz range. So let's have a look at this uh, this one down here. So just uh, I'll just go through another quick way that you can add some more movement into this signal here. So I've got this other variation down here, which is the same sort of tonal uh, tonal one that we used for the first one, except this one's got a lot more wobble in it. And that's being achieved by adding another LFO onto this. I've got the rate set to one quarter. And as you can see, I'm using this so it's LFO5 here. And it's going over to um, the cutoff and the resonance of it. So that's going to be modulating it. It's not too much, as you can see. You can, it's only going down by 11. If you click on that, you can do it like that way. And down minus 21 from where it was. Um, so it's just about kind of like being experimental and just trying these different sort of um, little movements in, in, your, um, in your filters, in your, the level of your oscillators. Um, and yeah, I think that's also going, set, that's being sent to something else somewhere, I think. Where's that being sent to? Oh yeah, it's just the uh, cutoff and the uh, resonance, of course, it's them too. So yeah, that's, that's how I create those extra movements. If I was to bypass that, it wouldn't sound as wobbly, probably. So yeah, it's not as, um, as defined, that wobble. Um, it's more of a tone to start off with, and then it gets uh, quite defined. So let's put those back on. Yeah, so that's how, that's how I've um, made the, the lead bass sounds in the uh, track that I've just had come out called Alien. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over today in this production video. So yeah, if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more like this, subscribe. And yeah, if you want to check out the EP, head over to Beatport, SoundCloud or Spotify. You can, uh, you can check that out and grab a copy if you like it. And if you want to support me, head over to Patreon. Um, got loads of new production videos up there. One about side chaining and a couple of exclusive tracks from this month. And a brand new sample pack and some new stems. <laughs>